Hello, and thank you for your interest in the Animal Funding Atlas, which is a new grants mapping tool designed to facilitate collaboration and enable strategic grant making for animal-related funders. The project is supported by the Summerlee Foundation, the ASPCA, Tigers in America, and Maddie's Fund. My name is Che Green, and I'm with an organization called Faunalytics, and our role is to oversee the development process as well as the grants database management. This video is covering three short scenarios to allow animal-related funders to make effective use of the Animal Funding Atlas. I also encourage you to check out the two separate videos, one of which provides a background and history of the Animal Funding Atlas, and the other, in particular, shows the basic features and functions of the atlas. I recommend you watch that basic features and functions video before watching this video on the scenarios. For the first scenario, we want, just want to look at a very simple usage type for the Animal Funding Atlas. In particular, where the idea is that we want to help funders find other funders with whom to collaborate on different project areas. So let's say for this example that you're starting a new foundation or that you're an existing foundation and expanding your geographic area and you're specifically interested in who else is funding wildlife related projects in the state of Colorado. So in order to find other funders and to see what they're funding, there's a variety of ways that we can go about this. I would recommend choosing your primary region of the United States, which then allows you to drill into different sections of the United States. In our case, it'll be by state. And that's one of the easiest and quickest ways to hone in on a particular state. So now that we've selected the United States, we'll also choose Colorado. You'll see that the map will zoom into Colorado and really focus on just those that are based in Colorado. And then again, we are specifically interested in wildlife related projects, which we can drill into using these species categories here. So if we use browse species and drop that down, what we will see is that there are three wildlife categories among the mix. So if we unselect all to clear the map and then selectively add back the three wildlife categories, what we then end up with is the list of all grants in the state of Colorado that relate to wildlife. We've ended up with 379 grants that have gone to 118 recipients and have come from nine funders. And so we've really narrowed down the Animal Funding Atlas from an initial uh, set of over 17,000 grants to now fewer than 400. This allows us to then click on list view, see what those grants are, who they went to. We can click here on funders to see who those funders are. And here's the answer to our question. So if we're looking for other funders interested in wildlife in Colorado, these are they, and these are the folks with whom we might collaborate. Not only do you see the list of funders, but in most cases, you can actually find the current contact information by double clicking on those funders, getting the details for the funder, as well as a list of all of the grants that they've, they've provided. So I hope you can see that this is a really easy and useful way to find other funders with whom to collaborate. And now we'll take a look at a couple of more scenarios. For this scenario, we'll look at concentrations and trends in animal-related funding. So let's say that you're a funder who's specifically focused on capital campaigns and funding facilities and equipment, and you're interested in learning how much money goes to that project type relative to other project types and who's funding capital campaigns. And you may also be interested in understanding how those trends are changing over time. So it's a multifaceted question. Fortunately, the Animal Funding Atlas allows you to do this relatively easily. So if, starting with the question of who is funding capital campaigns and how much funding is going to that, we can easily drill into that using our project types. So if we come over here to the sidebar and browse by projects, we see that facilities and equipment is one of our top level categories. And at this point, I should note that you can also drill down even further, and you can do this for both project type and species type. You can do that by clicking these little arrows. And so you can see that each category gets expanded into multiple subcategories as well, which really makes your search capabilities very powerful. If you need to access the definitions for all of these different categories, 
you can see this link at the bottom of the sidebar, which will give you access to the full taxonomy and definitions that we're using. Now let's get back to our example for facilities and equipment. So we can unselect all to clear out the map and then add back facilities and equipment. And in that way, we can see that facilities and equipment have received roughly $30 million in funding, and that's out of just over 500 million in funding. But that 37, vast majority of our funders, 37 of 51, have actually given some sort of facility or equipment related grant. Again, we can click on the list view up here to see who those funders are, to see their specific grants, and to see who they gave to. If we wanted to compare facilities and equipment with other areas of potential funding, we can see first off that $30 million out of $500 million is not a huge amount. So facilities and equipment receive a relatively small proportion. But how small are we talking about? So if we unclick facilities and equipment, and that was 30 million, let's just take a look at animal care. So if we click animal care after clearing out everything else, we see that $199 million has gone to animal care over the years. So compared to $30 million for facilities and equipment. And again, let's just take a look at one more example, animal population control. A lot of money, of course, goes to spay and neuter and similar project types. And we see that about $111 million has gone to that. So of the three project areas that we looked at, facilities and equipment certainly represent the smallest. As a funder, that information is interesting because you can find out not only the types of projects that are being funded, but who is funding them and who is receiving those grants. Another way to use this, and it can get quite granular, but is to use that information in combination than with grant years or grant amounts down here. So for instance, if you wanted to see the trends in funding for facilities and equipment, you could look at each individual year and the total amount going to facilities and equipment and quick, pretty easily compile sort of the trend line in terms of whether facilities and equipment are increasing or decreasing as a proportion of total grants. In this third and final scenario, we'll talk about how to use the Animal Funding Atlas to find at-risk areas in need and explore potential funding gaps. In this scenario, let's say that you're a funder who makes a lot of spay and neuter grants and that you focus specifically on the state of New Jersey. To see how much funding is going to that issue in New Jersey and where there may be funding gaps relative to the need, you could take the following steps. So again, we would start off by narrowing our geography to New Jersey, and the best way if you're looking at a particular state, usually, is to use these two drop-down boxes, which allow you to explore each of the major regions of the world, and then break that into each of the major subregions for that particular area. So for the United States, it's broken up into individual states. We choose the United States, and then we choose the secondary region that is New Jersey. Scrolling down, we find New Jersey and select that. We'll see that the map automatically zooms into the New Jersey state and highlights the recipients and grant makers focused in that area. So what we want to do now is a, as a funder in this scenario who's particularly interested in spay neuter, we want to limit our project types to animal population control and we can even be more specific and choose sterilization within that. So once we've chosen this, what we have now is a map of New Jersey that represents spay and neuter funding specifically. And so we see within that state, it's not been a huge focus. It's less than half a million dollars that has gone to spay and neuter. And that's been provided by seven funders to just 29 recipients. So it's a relatively small pool compared to the overall animal funding atlas. That is a great starting point. So if you're a spay and neuter focused foundation based in New Jersey and you want to understand the landscape, that's a great way to sort of get a snapshot of who has funded what and when. Now, in order to line that up with where the need actually exists, we can look at a couple of indicators. So right now, this green shaded area represents the number of grants by state. And because that is by state, it's just the same for all of New Jersey. So let's change that, the total received by recipients. Again, it's the same for all of the state because we haven't changed the, the search granularity yet. 
But because we want to also match up where spay and neuter funding is happening with the percentage of people that are below the poverty line, for instance. So we want to see where pe large concentrations of impoverished people live relative to where funding for spay and neuter is going. So in that case, we can choose a demographic overlay of percentage below the poverty line and change this to from by state to by county. And what we'll see is that the map changes and pulls up a level of granularity for the state of New Jersey that we can then use to dive in in further details. So what we see is that these purple shaded areas are now indicating the total received by recipients by county. So the darker purple areas represent higher concentration of funding for spay and neuter, and those without any purple shading show no concentration of funding. The diagonal hash lines that you see relate to the demographic filter. And so the thicker, heavier lines represent a greater percentage of the population that is below the poverty line. And specifically, we can see that in some counties, that's quite high. So in the state of New Jersey, what we see is that concentration of funding, as measured by amount received by recipients, is concentrated more in the northern part of the state which is perhaps not surprising. That's where the population centers are. That's where New York City is. But we also see that here in this bottom part of the state, particularly in Cumberland County, New Jersey, that the percentage below the poverty line is quite high. And yet this county has received no funding for spay and neuter. Now it's entirely possible that there are unique dynamics to New Jersey. I live on the opposite side of the coast, so it may not be as relevant. But you can see how this kind of tool will allow animal grant makers to line up demographic information along with animal grant maker information to help identify potential funding gaps and look at where the need really isn't matching up with the funding being provided. And we hope that that will be a useful tool for many of you. Thanks so much for listening to these scenarios. If you have any questions about any of the content covered here, please don't hesitate to contact me. I'm Che Green with Phonolytics. Thanks very much.